I would like to discuss the mysteries of time and how existics applies to the concept of time and deals with some of these mysteries. In general relativity and special relativity, one of the unique features we find is that time can bend, that more than one person can experience more than one rate of the passage of time at the same time. And this is quite interesting. Furthermore, in quantum mechanics, time is reversible, meaning that things can happen either forward or backwards in time, moving forward or moving in reverse, and that these, these movements are indistinguishable on the small scale. So one of the issues naturally that rises from this issue is, well, why does time seem to move forward? If you look at a clock, you'll always see it rolling forward. You never see it go counterclockwise. So it's strange that on the quantum scale, time is reversible. Yet on our scale, time seems to only move in one direction. And then when you look at special and general relativity, it's even stranger that time can have different rates of passage of time based on your vicinity to a large massive object, such as the Earth, or the speed you're moving relative to your surrounding objects. These and other issues that come up in physics surrounding time make time quite a mysterious phenomena. If it is a phenomena, or what is it? What is time? That seems to be one of the big philosophical questions that even modern physicists today have a struggle with. If you go online and you watch Brian Cox's video or Brian Green's series of videos, they both cover time quite well. And what I find very interesting is that where existence applies to the concept of time becomes quite apparent when watching these videos in light of what I'm about to show you. Existics brought me to a concept of time that, in hindsight, almost seems to be intuitive, or rather that it is counterintuitive that it is not a normal feature of modern theories of time. And that is three-dimensional time. Now, at first it may seem kind of strange to think of time having dimensionality similar to space, given that the concept of extension, such as we find with space, is quite natural, where the idea of extension in time isn't quite that natural. However, if we look at the reversibility of time, or that uh, there can be experiences of different passages of the rate, different experiences of the passage of time, that there seems to be implied <clears throat> at least one extra dimension of time. And let's kind of look at this with a little three-dimensional model. Now let's go ahead and think of this point here in the center, the origin here, let's think of that as the present. And if you'll notice, there's quite a, interestingly a dimension of time pointing kind of straight at us at that present moment and we'll come back to that in a moment but, but first let's just go with our ordinary concept of time and we'll just have it that linear time or ordinary time runs back and forth as such so this will be time dimension 1 T1 and we'll call it period as in a sequence of periods of time running along in a linear fashion. So you, we could see this as forward time, we could see this as reverse time, and we could see this as the present. Now what's interesting about seeing the present itself as an extra dimension of time is when we rotate our coordinate system as such so that we can appreciate the extra dimensionality and notice that even though we could travel along you know, period like, oh, let's say a clock ticking off seconds, right? And we're just traveling along. Well, there could be 
someone with a different clock here or someone in another galaxy or whatever, but basically we can take the concept of space and apply it in time such that we can spread across the present dimension of time the, the same period but in different locations. Or, rather than moving along uh, different periods of time, each time at a different present moment, we could also think of it as that actually we're moving along from different moments or different periods through a continuous present. So we can see it as either way, that we're either moving through a, period, a sequence of different present moments or we're always in the same present or same moment traveling through a series of periods. So I think that the distinction between present and period makes for two easy dimensions of time. Now for a third dimension of time, which is a little less intuitive, we'll, it'll just be the passage of the rate of time. So basically, you could travel along, you know, this, so, so here's like, let's say, the clock that we associate, you know, the way time that we associate it to move by, it's like this rate, or we could move up at different passage, different rates of the passage of time and move quicker. So the, the higher up this dimension, this third dimension of time, which is passage of the rate of time, the faster through periods one would move, or the faster through the present one move, would move. So basically, we could think of various rates associated with this dimension, so now we clearly have three dimensions of time. But what you need to understand is that I didn't just sit down one day and say, oh, you know, let's come up with three dimensions of time. Rather, in trying to wrestle with a concept in in what I consider to be a, one of the mysteries of time, I stumbled upon a solution to that mystery and after having resolved a mathematical equation, what I ended up realizing was that when I looked at my mathematical equation, it was implying the existence of three dimensions of time. So that is how I came about the concept of three dimensions of time and then once I then <clears throat> um, transformed the the equations from how they were in existence into a three-dimensional time coordinate system and then came up with partial derivatives, tensors, things like that. What became very apparent is that what is missing in modern physics is the concept of three-dimensional time. And what's interesting is now that we've gone over this a little bit more, we can go ahead and look at some of modern physics as it stands and juxtapose next to it the concept of 3D time and see how it becomes almost intuitive that what is missing from physics is the concept of 3D time. In physics, we have three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. What Newton was able to show us is, for him, having a continuous time it allowed him to calculate motion. And then Einstein comes along and gives us the wonderful tool of being able to have space and time as, as being part of one and the same thing, space-time, and that space-time can have curvature, and that gravity is the curvature of space-time, so on and so forth. But, to push it even further, the application of the existence equations to physics elevates it even more. Where Einstein leaves us is with what is called the four vector, I'm sorry, which is called the position four vector or velocity four vector, which com is composed of three vectors associated with space and one vector associated with time. What I would like to introduce would be the the position or velocity six vector 
three dimensions of space and three dimensions of time. Now right away, if you think about it, with three dimensions of space and three dimensions of time, it seems as though symmetry would be a little bit more natural. And as we will explore later, it's extremely more natural. In fact, where I think physics has sort of misled itself is in the pursuit of extra dimensions of space, when in reality you can satisfy all of the needs that physics has where physics looks to extra dimensions of space for those solutions, that all can be rectified using extra dimensions of time. Remember, in mathematics, the, the dimensions don't care whether they're one thing or another. In mathematics, all works the same. So you can take the, the equations that deal with five, six, seven, excuse me, dimensions of space, and, and rather than, than conceptualizing that as being dimensions of space, it's just extra dimensions of time. So, that is the contribution that existics has to physics, philosophy, and mathematics. Well, not so much mathematics, but applying mathematics to physics with some philosophical insight that three dimensions of time and three dimensions of space together can solve a lot of issues. Some of the issues that I've been able to deal with quite successfully applying the three-dimensional model found in existics, applying that to physics, I've been able to deal with the concept of the arrow of time, the conservation of parity violations, the so-called missing antimatter, dark matter, and dark energy, the inflation period during the Big Bang, and the now apparent superluminal neutrinos. And the list goes on. I've been dealing with applying existics to physics for over a decade, and the fruits of those labors have been great enough that it is now time for me to share them with you folks. And so, before we do that, I thought that I would briefly go over the concept of three dimensions of time, and what you should look forward to relatively soon is that I will actually work out on the uh, whiteboard behind me how I came to the concept of three dimensions of time uh, uh, deriving the proper tensors for using three dimensional time in, in uh, special and general relativity how that can also be used by interestingly if I take the three dimensional time coordinate system as it's, as it's uh, designed for special and general relativity and I simply rotate it 90 degrees, it then becomes the equations for quantum mechanics. And that's quite exciting when you, when you think of the implications thereof. So, thank you and uh, look forward to communicating with you again soon.